So the colonial thinking is a it's, it's a very interesting topic and very interesting theory and concept that can really help us understand uh, deeply understand what is happening in the community in almost all the spheres in, in, in the community or uh, in formerly colonized uh, uh, contexts. So I, I I start by exploring what what is this all this decoloniality. So of course the coloniality is doing away with colonial colonialism. D means D is like uh, the the con D comes from doing away or uh, like this construction and deconstruction. If you are deconstruction de deconstructing, it means you are like doing away with what has been constructed so here it's like demystifying uh, we wanna not really demystifying but we we we, 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 we wanna re reanalyze re we, we, we wanna remove this uh, power that has been exerted exerted by colonialism so i, st I start by saying uh, Colonialism dehumanizes the colonized. Colonialism makes the colonized be like uh, sometimes considered as animals. They are not human. Yeah, they have no agency. They yeah, they're there to they are worthy exploitation. They are worthy to be exploited. They are worthy to only benefit the colonizer, but uh, they might not be have a right to. To, to benefit themselves. That's how colonialism works. And I think um, we have several examples of colonialism in, uh, in, in Africa. I think Africa, only like two countries. I think, Somalia, I think Ethiopia and uh, Liberia were not colonized, but the rest of Africa was colonized. And I think uh, South Africa was just the other day that it, it came out. So. It came out of colonialism, so this is a, a, a real thing. Yeah, so we there's need to identify the oppression that is brought by colonialism and to resist it so that we can get sustainable transformation. And importantly, we need to, so that we can affirm the humanity of the colonized. Uh, you you could have heard about this the story of Sarah Bat Batman. Uh, Sarah Batman, yes, the lady who was taken from South Africa and taken to Europe, and he was she was used uh, as a, in a freak show, so they were viewing her as an uh, as an app. Like uh, her her body features her body features were considered abnormal because uh yeah you know the color and the body features they were considered uh, the small small they said she had small ears and uh, big a big behind which was not uh, the norm in europe so they even go, uh, he, there was even a term for for maybe the big there was a term for the big behind they found a, a medical term that uh, described the big behind as a disease and the small ears and other features were like this. Uh, she's more of an app than a, a, a human being. So she was exploited. She was used, put like in, in a so People come and you know, do all sorts of mad things to her. Yeah. So that's what we talk about dehumanizing. Dehumanizing. Yeah. So there's need to resist such oppression. So that we can assert the humanity of this colonial, the colonized people, and there is need to. Uh, and after we assert, uh, we we need to bring uh, sustainable transformation because yeah, such transformation will uh, consider the colonized, uh, will come from the colonized. They will uh, own it, and it will be speaking to their to their needs, to the immediate needs, not the needs of the colonizer. So we will, uh, these issues of being exploited by the colonizer will be addressed because uh, well, there is a saying or there is some thinking that no knowledge is, is, is free. 
no knowledge is neutral all knowledge has a bias you are you are told something or you are given something so that uh, to, to benefit the one who gives you the knowledge uh, has some interest in that so you you as the colonized should be able to to make your own knowledge so that uh, you you shun being exploited so well we go with the uh, the next point there i'm talking about how colonialism considered africa as primitive barbaric and dangerous and diseased that's how africa was dismissed you see we it was taught africa was taught as uh, uh, not having history yeah it uh, when colonial colonialists came it was like africa they have discovered africa that's why we say like uh, you you will hear some some lakes still called uh, like you, some names that are not african they were renamed given some african some european names yeah because of this view that um yeah history started with the arrival of the of the colonialists so, so does it mean that who, who the people who are living here before the arrival of colonialists colonialists does it mean they were not human they, 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 does it mean they couldn't think they couldn't relate with the, all the, the environment they could they, they didn't have a life you see. so it's uh, of course um, we need to appreciate this uh, what how the world how colonialism has shaped the world has uh, kind of made silence the voices of the colonized i go to the next point when we turn to specific issues of disability there is evidence that african communities understood disability differently from the ideas of the west there are instances where Africa constructed disability different. Like how we think about disability now is not always how it has been. It has a lot of colonial influences. Yeah. Disabled people, the example, I'm just giving examples of how disability was constructed differently in Africa. Disabled people were accepted and given visible roles in society, such as being considered as gods in the ancient African civilization of Kemet, Kemet that, that is Egypt, as well as in Yoruba folklore. Like they were actually, disabled people was, were raised with that high status of their gods. They are not a charity case, they actually uh, have a god status. In Botswana, or historical Botswana, being blind or having mobility challenges was not, was not considered to be a disability, but was viewed as normal and was associated with increased spiritual insight and other powers. That's another example. And uh, in Zimbabwe, there are the people called uh, Vadoma who have an, uh, an, a condition that is medically called ectrodactyl, which makes them miss three middle toes and the outer ones turn in. And uh, these people, they regard themselves with pride even forbidding their members from marrying outside the tribe. So we are saying uh, it, they don't consider it as, as, a disab as a disability or a deformity. It's, it's kind of a source of pride. So this, this is another example where a disability is, uh, is, is uh, how Af Africa considered disability is uh, was kind of different. Oh, yes. This, they use other uh, parameters to view disability. Excuse me. So, using these examples, it could mean that uh, disabled people were integrated in daily life, in daily life activities in Africa to some extent. Yeah. So, um, even with those examples that I've given, it doesn't mean that Africa, pre-colonial pre Africa was perfect. There were other instances where disability was seen as a, 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 a problem and where it, the reaction wasn't, wasn't good or the treatment wasn't good. 
So an example is the Igbo, Igbo of Nigeria, where although they were unfamiliar with the deformity of shape, they viewed being brown skin or what I call towny or a kind of a, a, a whiteness as deformed because uh, it was different from what was prevailing like the black beauty you know everyone was black and black was considered beautiful and then all of a sudden you you are uh, a, a, a brown a very brown or towny child comes come, comes uh he, he he was considered he or she was considered as as, as a deformed see that was a kind of disability how uh, disability was formed and then uh, there were also also in nigeria there were cases of twin killings when you give birth to two to, to twins you are they are considered an, uh, an abnormality and they will actually be killed and uh, we also have cases sometimes we have cases of ritual killing in some african countries uh, especially targeting people with albinism and also we have uh, disabled children cases where disabled children were hidden by the family from the public and even killed so what are we saying here we are just saying that uh, african indig indigenous values and practices should not be idealized we should uh, they should not be idealized but they should be pursued critically so as to resist any reproduction of exclusionary and oppressive African narratives towards disabled people. So we we this we are saying there are things to learn from the past. The, the past had its, its positives, like pre-colonial Africa had its positives, but it also had its negatives. So we should uh, do a balancing act. We should be critical of our adoption of this indigenous knowledges, indigenous philosophies, philosophies should be critical. It should just, it shouldn't be just blanket.